Hey, if uh, you're in the chat and you see us, give us a thumbs up. And uh, we are, are we on the internet? Looks like we are. Hey, this is going to be a great, great show today. Let's fire her up. I'm going to hit record and get going. Actually, just give me one second here. Steve Wybrow and Arrow Kaya joining us today live. We're going to um, dive deep into their holy work they're doing right now. These guys are fearless warriors, for truth, and the children, most importantly. Um, give me two seconds, guys. Talk amongst yourselves while I get one thing set up here. So are you in uh, Austrian homeland as we speak? Exactly. Right in the heart and the center of Europe. We're not going anywhere. There's lots of talk about moving to Mexico or somewhere else. No, mm -hmm. we're standing our ground. We're taking our country back. That's what we're doing. That's how we feel here, you know, in the States, of course, we're just a half a step ahead of Austria as far as what they're trying to do to us. But we happen to be in the California Republic as opposed to the state of California corporate interest. And they're throwing the kitchen sink at us now, just trying to starve us out, burn us out, do everything to make it impossible for us to exist, opening our borders, uh, subjecting us to um, you know, combatants uh, from other countries that are, you know, being trained militarily, uh, you know, and given, uh, you know, weapons to use against us. So this, uh, you know, if we don't shut this down soon, it's going to go kinetic. It really will. But uh, my attitude is, hey, I was born here and I don't even care if I wasn't born here. This is, you know, my new habitat and I'm not going to be the one that leaves uh, Newsom is the one that has to leave, you know, and all his satanic cabal, they're the ones that have to leave. And, yep. um, you know, this grander cycle that is completing right now is not going to allow their behavior to exist any longer. They've already taken themselves out. But in the meantime, they can harm a lot of us and it's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, uh, every, every day, you know, we say out loud, evil shall not exist. It will not succeed. And that is the truth. So we have to stay strong in that. And that's why it's so great to have you guys here, because this is no longer regional. This is global. Amen. Amen mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. And um, we are we are all live on all platforms. Everyone, thanks for joining us on this special emergency broadcast. Um, I'm excited to jump in, so I'm going to hit record, and we'll do this. Boom, and we're back for another episode of AlphaCast. I'm Mike Winner, and I'm here, as always, with Dr. Bear Paul Lando, coming to you live and direct from the beautiful uh, Smith River up here in the great state of Jefferson. Um, we were just talking right before the we hit record on why we're here. We're here because we are have been called to this land. This is our land. And we are not leaving. We are not escaping to Texas. We are not going to Florida. We are holding our ground because this is our place. And as Bear just said, Gruesome Newsom and his satanic cabal elite friends can leave. So that's going to be a main, main theme of this show today. And if this triggers you, well, maybe you need to listen. Embrace your trigger and um, give us a shot here today because um, we are going to be going deep into what evil is and how we counter it and what the blueprint is for taking back our world. So this is going to be a very exciting show. If you're new to Alpha Vedic, please uh, check us out at alphavedic.com. That's A-L-F-A-V-E-D-I-C.com. The best way to support us is by buying our products or joining us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Alpha Vedic. We have a wonderful online co-op there. And if you just want to join us uh, and find out what we're all about without any... Um, you know, economics <laughs> involved, that's fine too. Join us because your spirit and your time is just as valuable as sending some shekels over to help us out. You can join us in our telegram at t.me forward slash alpha Vedic. Join there for free. And uh, also discord if you're into uh, using that pl platform, alphavedic.com forward slash discord. Today, we have Stephen Weibrow and Errol Kaya on from the Gnostic Takeover. They're returning for their second bout with us uh, as we go deep against the, uh, the darkness uh, here um, and uh, really dive into um, 
what's going on with uh, the energetics of the world and how we can counter them with higher minded, um, true Gnostic awareness and spiritual, uh, <clears throat> the spiritual countenance of being connected with our higher selves. Uh, Freedom Fighters and, and Spiritual Samurai Stephen Weibrow and Errol Kaya uh, are back um, in this week's episode. The Gnostic Takeover founders will focus on giving a big picture overview of how they are creating an incredible success story in taking back the country of Austria and the heart of Europe. Errol and Steve are going to share with everyone what they describe as the template to take the planet back. What sounds impossible and unbelievable is in actual fact their daily experience which they claim can also be backed up by information from various fields of study. We are now putting all of our efforts into taking our country back. From our perspective, it can expand out into the entire world. Uh, that was Steve's quote. Uh, in our last chat, Steve and Errol discussed their method of confronting the um, what we're calling the 57 special sauce, uh, Cinco Hey, uh, rollout through a constructive notice of liability uh, process to agents of the system that are causing harm to all sentient beings on the planet. Their present recommendation is to let go of all distractions and come to the realization that 2022 is the year where humanity is finally taking the planet back from occult hostile forces. Steve and Errol, so wonderful to have you here. Dr. Lando, how are you today? Um, I'm doing great, you know, and uh, there is a sense of urgency, which is why we scheduled this special episode today. Uh, it's just really important for people to hear uh, Stephen and Errol's message. And, uh, you know, these are true heroes in my book. Uh, they're really stick, sticking their neck out. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for what you're doing for everybody on the planet. Thank you for being with us. And, uh, you know, what I really appreciate about you two is that you don't just approach it with uh, protest in the street. You understand it on many levels and, you know, um, strategize on many levels, you know, the legal lawful front, of course, with your, um, you know, with the processes that you share with people that can be used anywhere by anybody in the world. And also you understand the occult levels. Uh, you know, early on in my career, uh, before I even understood many of the things that I understand now uh, in the area of medicine and things that we were discovering and, and understanding how to help people in significant ways, uh, I was targeted on, we'll say, from the subplane very dramatically. And I didn't even know it hit me. It's just all of a sudden my uh, let's just say coherence was being scrambled from a different level. And whenever I started working with somebody in a certain capacity, um, the interference was so distressful. Um, I, I just wanted to crawl out of my skin. I, I couldn't think I couldn't do anything. So um, I did seek the help of some people that understood those matters better than I at the time. And they helped me deal with it. And I was able to, you know, get my life back, do my work. But if people don't believe that we are being manipulated from these other subplanes, um, then, you know, it's, it's, you, you don't understand how real it is until it happens to you. Now, when I sit back, just like you gentlemen, and you see the mass hypnosis going on on the planet, um, you know, you have to understand that this is a, an unconventional war and it's being waged on a different level. And you gentlemen bring the tools to the table to deal with it on that level. And just one more little word for the, the normies out there. You know, uh, you know, we understand what makes you tick. You're afraid. But, you know, some of us have been sticking our necks out on your behalf for a long time. And you have been weaponized against the rest of us. And some of us for years now have been suffering unneedlessly or needlessly because, because you're holding us back. Now, we're not waiting for you anymore. We just have to take care of business. But just, uh, you know, I guess my point is your fear, which is how you're controlled, uh, which is how you are made to comply to obey, to ask for permission, to be on your knees and be a slave. 
that fear is going to be your demise. So you better get your act together as quickly as possible because this is getting very real. And, um, you know, I, I, I wish you the best, but uh, some hardships are coming your way if you don't just deal with your own fears. Gentlemen, thank you so much again. And uh, we're here to listen to you today. So maybe if we just start off by telling us exactly what you're doing in Austria, which is amazingly under siege. And I never thought that, and I have Austrian friends, I never thought such an amazingly advanced country in so many ways would be reduced to what it is now. It's just, I, I, I watch in disbelief, uh, you know, as I do with other countries, including, uh, you know, my own country here. So uh, please share with us um, solution because that's what we're about here. This is all about solutions. We have run out of time, Neo, unfortunately, or I would rather say fortunately, because this is why we like to critique a lot about the alternative media because it's exactly the way these so-called occult hostile forces manipulate us is through deviation and not getting to the point and the point is and this one gets to crystallize the real understanding of what's happening here on the earth that's the challenge everyone's got an opinion on what's going on but what is really going on and when we talk about solution to this problem we have in the world, you can reduce it to one. The single problem we have in this world is called Satanism. And that's what we as spiritual warriors, as true forces of the light, we delve deep into the shadows of wickedness. And that's where we need to go, as Errol likes to say often. And I'd like to quote him there. All roads lead to the devil. And people don't want to go there. Because they're afraid of themselves. And that's the truth. Most people, you see, ha are in, a, in some sort of comfort zone. Okay? A lot of people. When they're in the comfort zone, then it's still somehow working for them. And they don't really have to go into deeper issues like satanism and they would say like oh that's too dark let's rather imagine the new world and let's create the new world instead of going into all this darkness okay but what they don't realize is that that's where the true treasure lies it's uh the cave you refuse to enter holds the treasure you seek and that's where we delve right deep in there and and try and find out where is he, this Satan? And is he really so intimidating and powerful as was portrayed by religions? Because from our direct personal experience working with plant medicine, he's a clown, is an archetypal figure. And that's where all the pennies drop suddenly when you can start to frame Satan in a whole different way and you lose any fear of it. So what, did you, you, what would you say about the importance of nailing it, what we're truly dealing with on the planet? What we're truly dealing with is a coloni colonization of this uh, realm on behalf of the Archons, who are the enemies of life. And that's what it's about. They want to come in, invade and destroy it, and obviously harvest as many whole, many souls with them as they possibly can. That's what's going on here. That's the biggest problem. So all the COVID, the wars and everything, they're just symptom, symptoms of the real problem. So I see no point whatsoever in focusing on the symptom because once you solve the source of the problem, all the symptoms disappear and the entire problem disappears. And uh, that source is Satanism. That's what we've got to deal with. And we have had, um, we have had uh, encounters with the high priest class of Satanism here in Austria, and we've been dealing with them. We've been in the net for, since the beginning, I would say now, and uh, 
we only just recently busted it, truly busted it. And now they all are showing face. Right, Steve? And Absolutely. It goes right to the point also that not even, you see, it's a pedo satanic criminal network. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And you enter the network by searching for the truth and having an intention like freedom. But you can't have your freedom unless you free the entire world. That's how it works. Because you see, that's the masculine principle. I have responsibility for all the children in the world that cannot live their lives because they can't take responsibility. You see, this is the masculine principle. And therefore, we let rip at anything that wants to stand in our way towards freedom. So the way this works is you have an intention and you're going to create that reality. And all, you're, all you have to do, this is the template, basically, the basics of the template we're talking about to take the planet back. You have a simple intention and you're going to face exactly that, what you, what you need to experience in order to fulfill that intention. So that's why you encounter forces of darkness, high priests of Satanism. And we have direct experience of that and we've dealt with them effectively. Boy, did we. And if I could make just a quick comment, you know, we are not talking about any religious concepts here. We are talking about real planes of energy that uh, people like Steiner and people for all time have told us about. And the fact that in more contemporaneously, and we talk about it on our show, there are people that have been able to verify these subplanes and entities within those subplanes and their ability to manipulate the mental plane. Uh, first, the rulers, these, these occultists, you know, they're the most hypnotized of all. And then, of course, they are given the tools to hypnotize the population. So this is a very real plane of reality. And, you know, you said it best uh, at the beginning, uh, these entities on other planes, it doesn't matter if you call it Aramon or Satan, you know, it's all the same thing. They have no power unless we give them our life force. And the, what they have succeeded in so far is to have this, uh, you know, a cult community uh, not only give them power, but also uh, ritualize it in ways to concentrate the power and then try to recruit the uh, masses of humanity and, and harvest their life force to give to these entities also. So this is very real, folks. Uh, it's not religious. And uh, please continue, gentlemen. The recruiting mechanism, you just spoke about recruiting. The recruiting mechanism of this insidious evil force is... Um, lack of morality and morals. It's our only protection from being intruded and infiltrated by this force. Moral code. Stronger our moral code, the more freer we are. The weaker our moral code is, the more we lose our freedom, the more we lose our souls to them. So they recruit us in the end. And they tried that with us big time. Yeah. So It's a moral test. So we can pick this story up, I would say, from last year. I, I spoke at the main square in Linz from May, beginning of May 2020. And I did one whole year. And basically speaking every single week, because it was a weekly thing. I would show up there every Friday. And just being me and talking about the truth, because I knew what time it was. I knew they have declared war on humanity and they've declared war on the earth. And that's where I get activated because me and Errol, we are protectors of this earth. That's why we can deal with them. It's our true essence. That's why it's important to know thyself, to really truly name what it is that you're doing. And we're protectors of this earth. And we won't let anyone move a single bit to invade it. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. So the way this works, this template is you put an intention out there and you follow that intention with action. It's simple. Okay, so you speak about it. 
So let, let the source of all life, all creation, the all-powerful source, show how much you really want it. And it's important also to stay flexible in the action. So I'm not someone who just stays at the demonstrations and talks every week and repeats himself again and again, and then one day falls into victim mode. Oh, it's the other people who are not listed that are understanding me. No, you have to switch gears. And what happened, that was uh, after one year in May 2021, after one year, it was sort of like moving from the stage of the theater of the world. Like Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage. We moved from the foreground into the background where the real work only begins. And the reason why we were able to be confronted with the network directly, with the mafia, these are the real, uh, I wouldn't call them people, but entities that run planet Earth, uh, that run the system, not planet Earth. That's a key distinction that Gnostics make. There's a difference between the planet um, environment and habitat and the system that they've implemented here on planet Earth. So they are your normal everyday teachers. You wouldn't know that they're Satanists. Farmers. They're farmers, especially as we found out on the highest levels, they're farmers. It's incredible. But all this Vatican and the Vatican being on top with the Queen of England, it's all a show that we can back up with our direct experience that we had. We have our channel, the Gnostic Takeover on YouTube, which is not being censored. We are naming names. And that's also for a reason. OK, so what's interesting about the highest levels of this control system of the satanic network being farmers is it's about harvesting of souls. Isn't that it's true? about the harvest? Yeah. Yep. Incredible. Well, please share any, uh, don't, uh, don't feel shy about um, dropping any names here, but uh, please share anything that uh, you think would be uh, uh, useful to our audience. I'll just go back to where it will begun from because um mm -hmm we went directly into the background and how the network operates in the background. But before we go there, the network has always been with us from the beginning. The day I met Steve at that festival of in freedom. In October, he, 2020, beginning of October. Where he used to speak the first time I went there, the first time we met, okay? We met, we sat down on the table and the whole network was all around us, surrounding us. All of them were network. Back in the time, of course, we didn't know. We had suspicions, but we didn't know. But the network has been with us all along, ever since we began this journey. So what happened was, he was speaking. We were doing our energy work. And slowly, slowly, um, they started inviting us to their houses for dinners, parties, things like this. They started pulling us in. In the beginning, it's uh, love bombing, you know, and gift, giving you gifts and, oh, we appreciate what you do. And yeah, we heard you, 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 Errol, engage in shamanic practices. I, I need to show you something. Come here. I'm engaging in shamanism as well. When they're not, they will show you their drums and their shamanic tools, which they're sitting on to mock you with and um, things like that. And then they'll slowly say to you, oh, um, it's all about um, community now because of what's going on, right? So we, we want to build a community. You can come on board. We can work together, build a community. Uh, we're connected to this, to many other communities all across the land, and we can go and visit them. You can see them as well. And then but come, stay with us. You know, we'll give you a place to stay so we can work together. Sounds beautiful, doesn't it? So you're like, all right, then. Cool. So you go with that and you end up um, staying in their house, becoming dependent on them. They, they build dependency slowly. OK. And then once they build the dependency, you begin to realize, hold on a minute. Where are all the promises? 
Why are we not doing anything? Nothing's happening. And then when you ask them, they they blame you. They they tell like what they were saying to me was, well, you've been in this house how long now? And I've been waiting for you to make your uh, to make your move. And I'm like, hold on a minute. I've I've been waiting here for you because you told me of the things that you want to do. So is it really my duty? I'm a visitor here. You know, I'm going by what you say. You invited me. And a key point to add here also is the central theme that started is them separating me from Errol. That's the key theme that happened there. That happened later. That Yeah. Yeah, you're right. They separated us. OK, but that wasn't a full separation at first. Yeah, yeah. It was you were stuck in Vienna and I was in Linz. Mm -hmm. And, um, and Errol, did you come into this situation knowing that this was potentially a satanic coven or whatever you want to call it, it to cleanse it? Or did you come in thinking you would be doing good work with plant medicine? I simply ended up in Austria because I I knew what was happening. And there, there was a calling for me to come, an opportunity. And I knew it was a calling of a call of duty. I just knew it. How do I know? I just feel it here and I surrender to it and I go with it and I, I end up where I'm supposed to be. And that was the right call. I'm here now doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And now I know and understand why I am here. It's the way of the source training you to trust it through trusting yourself. So I ended up here in Austria without knowing what's going down, but knowing that something is going down not knowing how it's going to pan out and in full trust i surrendered uh then i started running out of savings because i, I hadn't been working for how many months and then things started developing we met and, and, and errol it might be good it might be good if you wouldn't mind because you've told this story on a few other um broadcasts but i don't know if our community's heard about it how you were detained and put into a concentration camp basically i think this is right. a great I mean, it's probably not the fun for you to tell, but how you held your ground and how you stayed in your kind of in your in knowing the law and knowing law and knowing who you are as a sovereign being, how they couldn't touch you and how they can't touch you now. Could yeah, you would you mind giving just a quick five minute um, brief synopsis of that? Because this was this happened after our last interview with you. Right. And it's a pretty phenomenal, crazy story. And a great showcase of <clears throat> what happens when you know law and you know who you are. Now you stand in your own power. How nothing, no, no government, no corporate entity can can control you. Right. So we we cut to the time where they uh, arrested me after after first contact with Liz from San Corona which we will dwell into later as well. Got back from San Corona from a job which we did on a, on a pyramid. We activated the magnetics on that pyramid. A pyramid in Austria in Grimmenstein. Yeah, Grimmenstein, a pyramid in Austria. And uh, as soon as we got back to Linz, the fest, where Steve was going to speak once again, the police close in and they take me in. And then it turns out that they want to detain me overnight because apparently I'm a legal immigrant all of a sudden. Illegal immigrant. Excuse. Anything they can have on me. So I spend one night in prison. The next day, they put me in the, in the van and they take me to a concentration camp. So I spent four days in that concentration camp and the story kept on changing. They said, oh, we just need four days. And then it turned into seven. And I said, basically what they were trying to do was they were trying to get me to com consent, comply, wear a muzzle, get tested, get vaccinated, and just put me out or just deport me. Just inject me and deport me. That's what they were trying to do. I never consented to anything, even the muzzle. I didn't wear the muzzle. They couldn't get me to do anything to the point the complex is 
they have their offices in the middle of the concentration camp. The staff have their offices in the middle. And I, all day long, I was walking around their offices, just looking, just looking at them. And they were peering out the window at me, okay? Feeling intimidated by me. I was giving them intimidation, basically, by not complying to their rules. And they were all looking out the window. What's that guy? What are we going to do with him? I became the guy they couldn't contain. And I just told them, listen, I'm walking out of here. Okay, I'm free. Keep my passport. Keep my driver's licenses. Keep my system identification for they weren't mine to begin with in the first place. They don't belong to me. They belong to you, the system. I belong to no corporate state or entity. I'm born free of the land. This is my land in the sense that I belong to the land. I don't belong to the state. There's nothing you can do and I'm walking out. You're all criminals. You're all complicit in genocide. This is a concentration camp. You start with illegal immigrants, which you call, and then you expand into the rest of society and put them all in concentration camps. They didn't know what to do with me. So I just walked out. Yeah, we. And, it, was, it was a group effort also, mm -hmm. um, but the basis was laid through that intention. And just standing your ground, no matter what, they can't force anything on you unless you fall into fear. As we go, here we go again. The biggest problem we have is our own fear. No, just stand your ground. They can't do nothing. They are nothing. They will always be nothing. I've told them That's the nothing. Um, attitude we have to have. And then we went there, uh, went there every day. I also sent a notice of liability to the president there. Yeah, um, as well as who me. Was running the retreat. Uh, the, it was a, an, a, an asylum camp. And, uh, and Errol also wrote to him and then they had to uh, let us go. They had to let him go because you were, he was educating everyone in the building mm. about the process of liability. Yep. And that's where they wanted him out. They wanted him out because... They, at the same time, they wanted to detain me, but they couldn't. They wanted, me, they wanted me to leave as well. So they had to let me go. So I just basically walked out that day, got in the car and we drove off, didn't we? Yep. And since then, I've been free. No passport, no system identification, no bank account, nothing. I am free, born free of the land. And this is all we need. We don't need any government approved stamp or uh, quantifying our names or proving anything to the corporate state. Because that's how they get legitimacy. That, that's how you consent. Okay, mm -hmm. You're going to them and begging to them for permission. And that's consent. You simply do not consent. And once you consent, you have to command them. You have to, you don't, you don't consent, you command. And that's how it works. You say, I'm in charge and command on my life. You have no authority. What are you going to do? You're the criminals, not me. I belong to the terrain. This is my terrain. I belong to the terror. Okay. So I am a, terrorist that's what true terrorism is by the way okay we're all terrorists because we belong to the terrain they inverted that and turned it against us i told them all of this and they were like what the fuck excuse me and that's how i got out and that's why i'm free today and now not only am i free i'm the greatest threat and danger to their entire system and network to the point <laughs> they have us all surrounded by the entire network now and we can name them one by one that's where we're at night right, right now okay so since those adventures um do you still have contact communication with some of those original people that we're trying to recruit you in in the first place the way this works is important to see what the network is okay that's where we go we leave the sort of three-dimensional realm of normal talking points about the, the world agenda, the UN uh, agenda 2030 and all that. We leave that and we go, uh, again, symbolizing going into the background. What is this network? Because it's a, it's a pedo-satanic criminal network. That's, for me, the most succinct uh, expression for it. However, it's best described by a great book that I recommend to anyone who wants to understand evil and therefore reach true enlightenment. 
because as a Gnostic saying goes, whoever does not know the roots of evil is no stranger to it. And what does this mean? Wetiko is a field phenomenon. Everything in its original state is, as Tesla explained, energy, frequency, and vibration. So Wetiko also has to be uh, based on energy, frequency, and vibration. Wetiko, other expressions are the archons who serve Satan. It's all the same thing. It's an S archetypal energy. Spirit of evil. Spirit of evil. And it's best when you dilute it, it's a field phenomena that is superimposed over the natural field that we call the terrain. It's like being the terrain sort of being the third dimension that will be the fourth dimension over it. We can't see it because our visible, visible senses can only decode the frequency of visible light. That's why everything that's outside of that frequency spectrum, we don't see. That's why we don't see Wi-Fi, for example. Mm. But that's what true Gnosticism is all about, is to see beyond the scene. Because the interesting thing about Wetiko, the spirit of evil, is it has a particular psychology. That's why real Satanists are ancient master psychologists. They know everything about the workings of the mind. And when you are going to be a threat to them, which they also have the technology to look into the future so they know who we are, they know, they know exactly who all of us are because we're the ones who are going to stand up to them. And so they can work on your psychology, on your weak points to keep you in that net. The network represent, uh, is represented by the Wetiko field. So in that field, like the picture I like to use to describe it is like a scientist outside of the tank, as David Icke likes to explain it also. It's a perfect description. Of Wetiko. So Wetiko, the Archons, they come into this reality from outside and they play certain players that are on the frequency of Wetiko. Yep. So that's how they can play the chessboard around you. That's why you end up, when you're really a threat to them, you end up being surrounded completely by the network. And that's how you end up with a girlfriend who's part of the network as well. That's happened to Errol. They All around you, your friends, your family, your... And it's also Dude. symbolized in the movie with Tom Cruise, where it deals with Satan, eyes wide shut. Right. Mm -hmm. At the end of the movie, after he partook in that ritual, he sees network people everywhere. Yeah, because yeah. they trap you. That's how they want to scare you. Oh, we're everywhere. We control everything. And then you but, subordinate. Yeah. The only way, you see, when you really strive for freedom, when you do not charge any money, from people doing the work because you are the charge of the source. The source guides you exactly where you want to go. That's the magic of life. Okay. Full surrender. Full surrender to the source. We've been homeless since uh, our job we did in St. Corona. And you just follow with it. And the only way you can get out of the network is by busting the network. Otherwise, you stay stuck in it. It's a net. It's a net and they're fishing for you. You have to bust it. Yeah. Do you feel like and, uh, when you're, sorry, Bear, I was just going to ask, do you feel like when you're really on target um, with the work that you attract more of this parasitic class? It's almost like the Archons know to focus that energy towards like, a, like there is like a war going on. They confirm to you that you're right on the mark when you are, basically. You can use them as a marker to locate where you are in your journey. Yeah. And I was just going to comment that it's exactly what you're describing. It's an electronic overlay. But what we have to understand is what they're trying to um, capture within that electronic net is just a super imposition upon a force field that is much stronger. So when we um, stand our ground, so to speak, then uh, there's nothing that can overcome us. Uh, you know, I had uh, 
uh, that other experience that I was uh, telling you about at the beginning, um, what I was allowed to literally see was exactly what you're describing, like a net that had been cast over. And once I saw it, um, it dispelled the magic. And also in the field of medicine, these things that we call disease are similarly, which I can see because I did this work for a long time. People come in with any particular diagnosis and you can see this overlay that's on them. Now we have all these things to translate into biology, but what's really causing those changes in the biology, again, is this overlay that people have accepted as a reality, as a disease. And then as a physician, you know, that's where you have to kind of walk the worlds between uh, doctoring and shamanism and help those people dispel that net. So that is, in my experience, exactly what you gentlemen are describing. It's demonic or archontic possession, which the, the uh, solution is shamanism. That's what shamanism looks at. And that's where I want to bring in the key topic, okay? I like to talk a lot about the information pyramid. And that's where we also, it, this relates to the topic of controlled opposition. And no matter who is controlled, that they will be exposed now, okay? Because the single one information that people that are under some form of control won't touch is the knowledge about the takeover. So you've got this new ageism going on. Oh, if I can't go into this market, I'll just create my own market. No, then in due time, you'll be taken over and colonized and put in a concentration camp. What you have to do, the only solution that we have is to take over. As we like to say, you lock us down, we take you down. It's as simple as. And the key thing on top of the information pyramid, okay, on the very top, that not even Freemasons have access to this information, it comes from plant medicine. This, what I'm holding here into the camera right now, is very rarely, rarely known plant medicine called Datura. And it's the most powerful force field that I have ever encountered in my life. And it came organically to us, didn't it? It's basically what, uh, what a nuclear weapon is, equivalent to what a nuclear weapon is for the Archons, basically. You know, if, 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 if it's used by the right person, it can change uh, the fabric of entire reality. It can bring in a new signal and wipe out and delete their um their version of reality their, their version of the matrix and you bring in what we call the the new earth the new signal is a is a signal which is a frequency of a new paradigm and one new, of the um, examples we can give one of the examples we can give of the new mm -hmm. signal is that our youtube channel has become uncensorable it's unbelievable, but we experience this every single day. Yeah. That's the new signal could because you, uh, it overrides mm -hmm. the old signal. Could you elaborate on, did you call it Doctura? And could you spell that for us? D-A-T-U-R-A, I think. Yeah. Doctura, Doctura. Also known as Jim Jimson Seed. Gemsin seed, oh. something like that, or uh, they call it's a very inappropriate name, but they also call it the devil's trumpet as well. It's got nothing to do with the devil apart from the fact that it nukes the devil. Is that because the flower looks kind of like a trumpet? Yeah, upside down, like yeah, a bell. Like I've a actually, I think I've um engaged with this mm. in college, yeah. and that was mm. what I actually took. I, I might be wrong here, but um, that's what I took where I, I lived for 20 years at another life. Uh, I've told this story wow. before on another podcast, but it was in college and it was an experimental psychedelic. 
Mm. <laughs> and I was like crawling out of my apartment. Well, well, I, I thought well, it might've been salvia, but I don't know. Somebody had given me, and they said, be very careful. It's very powerful stuff. Does this, do you combine this with, um, with, with another thing like you do ayahuasca to have the DMT effect or. Okay. Um, I have been working with ayahuasca um, since 2013. Right. Um, and also lately I've been working with Perganam Harmala, which is a uh, Syrian rue with Mimosa. Okay. So. Should I just explain what we did in San Absolutely. Corona? That's the best I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain what happened in a place called Saint Corona, Saint Corona in Austria. We were interesting name, interesting name there, by the way. <laughs> right. Yeah. Saint Corona, of course, where the Corona is, the crown. Because uh, the Corona is the crown. So obviously we're going to be called to the crown, aren't we, when we're doing the work of the crown um we were called there magnetically back in april hmm. right through our friend liz who's also here tonight we can introduce her later to you uh, if you guys wish as well i think it would be a good idea to do that now if that's fine with you because what i want to mention before we explain the experience we hmm. rescued we went to saint corona because there we encountered the high priest of satanism on top of the hierarchy pyramid in Austria and did the job that we had to do, which yeah, is to it. take I'd him down. I'd love to know more about this, but yeah, bring Liz in so if you like. Can you, can you, can you yes, just come? Because there's one thing talking about this network. It's a whole other thing to actually see what the real, what the great work is because. Hi guys. Uh, <laughs> I think the shadow. How are you doing? Fine. And you? Well, yes, so, yeah, this is Liz. I am Liz, and this is my six year old daughter, Leonie. She's a little bit shy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very nice to meet both of you. Thank you very much. So, what is the story? Yeah. Basically, I had already identified the guy who Liz was living with in April because I took um, a magic mushroom because it was offered to me. And I said, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't want anything to do with that today because I treat medicine with respect. I'd already had two beers. So I thought, nah, I'm just going to have a comfortable evening. It was the last evening of our experience there because the next day we went to Linz and Errol got arrested. So this is the power you're dealing with here. So I said no to the mushroom because he offered it to me. He, meaning the high priest of Satanism in Austria. His name is Francis Fogger. Yep. And I said no. But then what happened was, and I never have these sort of experiences, the mushroom started communicating to me. It was like, I know you don't want. However, you basically have no other choice. You have to go where it's uncomfortable. And yeah, as, as is a key feature of our journey, you know, um, that which you really need is where you least want to look at, is a quote by Carl Jung. It's so important. We need to go where it's uncomfortable and just face it. So I popped the mushroom and I could see what was going on in the house. Like it, it just connected all the dots, the church. He's living next to the church in the It's a chapel. house, which is a part of the church. Exactly. And so I decoded all of that and telepathically I was communicating with him and I told him we're taking everything. I'm not here for a joke. I know who you guys are. I know who you are. And we don't want a little bit, but we want everything. We take all of Austria back. We take the whole planet back. One domino falls, they all fall. That's what I basically said to him. And he was sitting in his chair and was like... <laughs> Like, because he'd never heard anything like that before. Because I know the only solution we have is you take everything. Any compromise with this force and you're in trouble. They use the mushrooms because it's a, it's a frequency, right? They use the mushrooms to frequency program and mind control victims. So be wary of who you do mushroom ceremony with. 
Interesting. This is crucial. Yeah. So, and that has led, led us then, this was the point where me and Errol reunited again, because me and Errol went separate ways. They managed to separate me and Errol for a few months, and we came back together on the 19th of ne uh, November, 2021, the 19th. They managed to divide us, uh, actually, end of May uh, through June, July, August, September, all the way into November. November. And November, we came back together. I was, I was called to go to San Corona again. And I actually moved in there. Or sh mm -hmm. should I say, I was magnetically drawn there and I ended up staying there without realizing it just happened it just happened and i didn't have i was living in a hut those days as well and we started building a yacht liz she bought a mongolian yacht and we started building this yacht in the garden of the property there just in front of the church and i ended up doing ceremonies there so i did one ceremony and before the first ceremony I did there, the day before, the police tried to arrest me again. Got a little bit physical. I defended myself. They had no power. They left me. I got away. So the next day, did the first ceremony. Steve wasn't there. Liz was there. Other people were there. The next day, I go upstairs I see this guy in his priest costume, priest outfit, fully revealing, yeah, I'm the priest. And apparently, we hear that the Cardinal of Austria came because through the ceremony, what we did was we um, disrupted the, uh, the signal, the energy of their energy what they were using to control the energetics of the land the artificial matrix the wetico the, the field. overlay the wetico field with this so do they it. use plant do they use plant medicine in their own way to um to connect with the archons or whatever or to have that their own kind of uh powers there is that what you're saying too what the satanists mm -hmm. they touch my medicine they burn okay all they can use is mushroom Hmm. because they can use the frequency of the mushroom. It's not like ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a nuclear weapon for them. They dare touch it, especially if I'm using it, uh, especially if we're using it. And I want to mention also, so, this is the number one representative of the Vatican. It's Cardinal Schönborn. Everyone can look that up. Cardinal Schönborn. So this guy, Francis Fogel, who was the priest there in San Corona in that church, turns out to be above this cardinal. So he's called in, the cardinal is called in by him the next day to see if he can balance the, uh, the, the frequencies again. Well, obviously, they, they, they can't restore it. So from then onwards, a week later, I decided to do another ceremony. And I'm, by then, I'm, I'm just calling out for Steve to come. Come here. There's a job in San Corona that needs to be done. And Steve is just coming out of his... Um, it's a long story it's Steve was going through a process Steve was going through a process and he was at the end of that process and I managed to convince him to come to Corona and he showed up yeah. because it was meant to be and we did another ceremony there okay and for the first time Francie, the priest there he joins us in ceremony mm -hmm. so he takes the medicine with us an hour later, an hour into the ceremony, hour and a half into the ceremony, he just leaves the yurt and goes into the house. He just leaves. So it's a good ceremony. So we, I go into the house and I go into his room and I see him face down on the sofa. Are oh, you all right, Francie? <laughs> So I go back to the uh, yurt and I go into my process and what I can see is who he is and what he's doing there. And I was shown by the medicine what is happening in the church, in the cellar, their satanic rituals and how they're in charge of it and what they're doing there. 
and that there is a certain frequency coming out, which is the overlay frequency. And through the ceremonies, we are uh, we are basically destroying what they're doing there. So what happens is we do s s several ceremonies, right? Was it four of them? In total four. Yeah. In total four ceremonies. Steve is a part of three of these ceremonies. So the last two ceremonies, when I'm preparing the medicine, I, I'm using Har Harmala and Mimosa, by the way. Syrian root and Mimosa, which is the uh, North African... Eastern European version of ayahuasca, very powerful, strong medicine, works with me perfectly. I add some um, datura seeds to it. I put some datura seeds into the brew while I'm brewing it. Next thing you know, because of my command, which is all evil must leave, the pipe works in the house start making funny noises and start exploding and blowing up all over the house. Bang, 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 bang. To the point we couldn't cook the medicine anymore on the fire stove. So we had to move from the fire stove to the gas stove to complete uh, the preparation of the medicine. So finally, we prepare the medicine. Okay. And um, we do a powerful ceremony that night. Yeah. Liz joins us. Another friend, Steve and me. The next day, we decided to do another one which was just three of us, Steve, me, and that other friend we're talking about, which took them by surprise because this ceremony was our last ceremony ever there. And we didn't sing, usually in ceremony, we sing ikaros, which are like, um, they're like uh, sacred songs and prayers, which the uh, Shipibo tribes of Peru sing in their ayahuasca ceremonies. I didn't sing in any Icaros. I didn't play a single song from the playlist and not a single instrument played. It was done in pure silence. We went into a five hour journey in silence. And we went into a deep, we went in deep. And boy, boy, boy. What happens next, huh? After that, after the ceremony, we start to talk about the ceremony. No, during the ceremony, we, we shown the whole network. Oh, yeah. Exactly. We've shown the whole network. <laughs> so during the cere good. ceremony, you were getting visions where you were seeing um, actual individuals who were are in the network. Absolutely. Absolutely. Full visual, full name, everything. In full information, everything. Because what happened was there's something which we call um, eagle medicine or thunderbird medicine, which is basically eagle medicine. It, it kind of, the medicine takes you out of the bubble, out of the environment which we live, and you come out of the matrix and you have an overview of what, what's going on inside of the matrix. It's like a different, it's, 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 a, it's a higher consciousness, you know? Like when you're inside the labyrinth, you don't know it's a labyrinth until you look at it from the top and it's like, oh, it's a labyrinth. You can see everything. You can see everything for what it is, who's doing what, who's network, who's not, and how it works and how they do it and everything. This is the power of the medicine. And it happened in that ceremony. And yeah, you, you tell the rest. And at the end of the ceremony, so we start speaking to each other. I'd already picked up during the ceremony that the other guy who did the ceremony with us is also part of the network. So we start talking with each other. Next thing you know, what was an internal process with ayahuasca medicine suddenly turns external and the people from the house, the high priest and other people come into the yurt to interrupt our ceremony. So the high priest along with two other people, so three of them, they just walk in right at the end of our ceremony. We could have gone longer and we were going to go longer because we were still decoding. So just as we're decoding, they know that we're decoding, they come in. And being under the influence of the medicine, still in ceremony, we see them exactly for what they are. The three archons right in front of us. So what they did they? Uh, what did you actually see visuals of them looking different, or was it like something above them? Or I would love to know more of that. That's interesting. You see it in them. 
ayahuasca changes your vision. So after an ayahuasca ceremony, you start to see them directly, the archons. For what they are. For what they are. It's like the glasses in They Live. That's ayahuasca. They're using cloaking, human cloaking. Yeah. But I mean, are they like reptilian? Like, or are they... Are, is grace. Just, really? Grace. They were grace. So basically what took place there was... I mean, we can't deny what took place there. It was like a... There's a war, ancient war, which has been going on since the beginning, be beginning of all creation, okay? Between the life force which created all life and creation and the enemy of that life force creation, which are the archons, basically. And this is a very old war. This has been going on since the very beginning of creation. So what happened was the higher elite class of the Archons met in the physical plane of the realm that we live in right now with the higher up elites of the life forces in that year, that night, in that ceremony. They came together. They were brought together. And when they walked in, we saw them for what they were, and they saw us for exactly what we are. However, they're so, so demented, they're still playing with us. So they walk in, they, they sit, and I say to Steve, Steve says to me, uh, should we seal and protect, should we end seal and protect the ceremony right now? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So we do it. And then we're like, right, we sit up. And I'm looking at them, and I'm like, of course, archons. You see? Archons. And then the high priest looks, he, without looking at us, he just goes, so what's going on? And he's smoking. And he's looking at Steve and he's blowing smoke. <laughs> and then, it, I was so close to tearing them apart there and then. I was going to tear them apart. So I, something came that, up. When you say that, Errol, do you mean metaphorically or like spiritually? No, physically, physically, physically. <laughs> okay. Yeah, physically. I was going to tear them apart. <clears throat> something came over me, okay, which was a um, higher self from another dimension, whatever. The dragon it was the dragon. And I was going to tear them apart. And at the last moment, I just looked at Steve, okay, and it, it wasn't me. It was the, that dragon turned around to Steve and I said, diplomat, speak. And Steve looked at me like, what the hell? <laughs> because I know that Steve can explain things. He's diplomatic. He's able to do the job, communication job, the job of communicating. Because if you leave it to me, I'll tell them apart. <laughs> so then Steve started speaking. So what did you say to them, Steve? Well, it's basically all about the shachmat. Checkmate. Checkmate. And I, the way I did it was, how do you explain a signal inside the bubble? How do you explain a signal that's outside of the bubble to a signal that's in the bubble? You can't. So that was, I would say, the biggest job we've ever done. Because that disintegrates. Yeah, what, did you get for that? what I got from that the next morning, what I want to say is this job, what we did in St. Corona, disintegrates the entire network. That's the true power of that ceremony because you're taking out the top of the pyramid and everything crumbles. What we're looking at is what we did was basically um, what we call a system flush because the ceremony we did, the ceremonies we did all together, especially the last ceremony, activated the magnetics to come in, which Steve talks about as the, the principle of the electrical pyramid, which is the control system. So we activated the upside down magnetics coming into for the Merkaba. This, by the way. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. the Merkaba. Uh, this is the magnetics coming in, flushing out anything that no longer serves this reality. And you walked into the house next morning. Yeah. And I get physically attacked yep. by the high priest twice. In yeah, it, it's basically from uh, I was there for two weeks from always being friendly. Hey, how are you? Always, he always tried to be friendly 
sort of pretend pretend and he went right physically at me he was like fuck you steve and he put me you know grabbed me by the throat mm. and just up, onto the window and errol intervened and it was it, it was a life-threatening situation the second one especially because at night i went up i wanted to make a tea because I was having a sore throat because they were constantly attacking us. The witch, the level of witchcraft which they were doing to us was, I've never seen. The only like thing that. that counteracted that is us going up the mountain every day in the ice cold water, breaking the ice on a mountain lake and going into the ice cold water and to high, high command, commands, yeah. to high command. That's the only thing, the regular routine every single day that doesn't make you go crazy because the level of witch witchcraft is something else. So I went up there in the evening just wanting to prepare a lemon uh, tea and he starts attacking me. He throws the uh, he water. throws the water onto the floor and grabs me and throws me onto the on, onto the floor. I've got him. I've got him. Yeah, and I somehow entangled myself from that and ran back into the yacht. So, so. the fuse left uh, the fuse went off with him because of what I describe is the worst nightmare for a high priest, which is it, it goes into the changing of reality timelines. Mm. That's what happened there. You change a timeline of reality. So next day, it was time for us to leave. Job was done, basically, so we could leave. Obviously, we had to go into the house to get our stuff. However, every time we go into the house, uh, Steve gets attacked. So I said to, uh, I said to everyone, all right, guys. Uh, just tell me where all your stuff is. I'll go inside the house. I'll, I'll get all our stuff and then we can get the hell out of here. So I went inside the house and the, the, the high priest and these minions, they came running around me. You have to leave, Errol. You have to leave. Like this, they were reacting to the magnetics which were coming in, which we bought through the medicine. They were reacting. It's like, this reality could no longer sustain them and they were burning mm. so i uh, i said all right i'm leaving i'm leaving okay good luck guys they, they can't touch me by the way so i got the stuff and we left and that's it since then we've basically been homeless since then yeah, <laughs> yeah. there is there is somebody in the chat that's been in the chat for a bit trying to counter your talk and saying you took his child or something p80 filthy fellow um, oh, was yeah. saying all this is true. I don't know. Is this the high priest or someone? No, Who's that's the here? dog. That's the that dog of the high, high priest. priest. The former uh, okay. boyfriend of Liz, Patrick. I, they just I can kind of tell from the way he's chatting that um, it doesn't hold much power. Exposing but, themselves. Exposing, exposing themselves. Yeah. Because I wanted to say, give my, did I give them? My Liz, cousin. they're saying that you, you've been brain. He, this person is saying you've been brainwashed and they stole you no. and the child. Look at me. Do I look brainwashed? I'm not looking brainwashed. I am clear, <laughs> as clear as I can. And I told you, every mother on earth would protect her child. It's the precious thing we have and life, poor life force. And they want that I give them the, my consent to sacrifice my child. How dare are they? Completely dementia. And no. No way. You know, we are here, the children from Mother Earth, and this is our Earth. And we protect our children everywhere we go. So I am not brainwashed. There you go. Bless you. Bless you, Liz. And this, I can see it in your eyes. I, I can see it in her eyes. And exactly. I can see I can And never see, yeah. uh never mess with Mama Bear. Sorry. No, I am a lion, <laughs> a big lion, <laughs> and really strong. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the P eighty filthy fellow, and that's an interesting name for yourself, by the way. Calling yourself yeah. filth, filthy, filthy. Uh, that would not be a word I would use for my um for my name on YouTube personally. My name is actually no, Alpha is Alpha DJ. Warrior <laughs> for a they're, reason. They're, they're filthy. Because they have filth, nothing but filth on their hands. Yeah. And he was assigned to her as a handler. To get my child? Yes. No, no way. And it's so interesting, this guy shows up in her life not long after she meets us. Mm -hmm. And always try to manipulate from behind. But there is no power. 
how can you tell a mother to sacrifice a child or to give the consent? No. And it's not working anymore. And that's why he's going crazy. Because he does want to get us back. And they won't. No. As long as I leave. That's the thing. Yeah, absolutely. So how is this affecting the entire network or hierarchy of the network they're, they're going crazy yeah. well what's what's happening let me explain the mechanics of this <laughs> is it's an electrical pyramid okay this is the entire control structure is an electrical based pyramid these beings in the witiko net okay the archons they have no emotions because they have no magnetism that's why electromagnetism, they're only electrical, upright pyramid. That's why they censored the work of Nikola Tesla, because that is the basis of free energy technology. Okay, so when you take out the top of the pyramid in the form of a ceremony with plant medicine, the entire control structure unravels. However, it takes time for it to filter through into the physical. On the energetic level, it's already dropped down. However, all you need to do is keep your focus and follow the instruction given by the source. So we just and, do what comes up. And because they have lost that magnetic half of the equation, they cannot renew themselves, which is why they need to harvest us. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Here we go. And we Bingo. don't consent with this. We are poor life force. It's it's our realm. It's the, the, we're here to live, okay, in this creation, as part of this creation. This is our realm. It's our house. It's our temple, not theirs. We don't leave. They leave. Simple as. Yeah. They have so no what? legitimacy, no authority. No command, no power, because that's we have the command. So what's the next step? Well, in actual fact, I would say that from our experience today, um, we've been homeless since that job uh, in St. Corona. And again, we ended up for more than six weeks at someone in the network. Her name is Maria Shoy. They really don't like us calling them out. Because That's why for a very that. specific reason, when you mention names, it's your biggest protection because you are what you do with that is you switch off with Tico. Because by naming the name, the frequency, you switch off with Tico and they can no longer see you. They can't interact with you anymore. That's natural law, natural order. So we ended up for more than six weeks at a place in a tiny apartment in and that ended yesterday just yesterday and today we they wanted to they, they want to play this game over and over so another two people from the network wanted to invite us to their house they keep playing the same game when once you're in the net you're in the net you have to bust it so today we found out that they have the same psychology as all of them and we said nah we're not going there and in actual fact before i came onto this call we now have the real chance to finally get a home. And that just happened before we came to this call, which is the first time we enter acting with humans again, because I know the people. There's a woman who organized my 5G events um, uh, and we're getting help finally. And once we settle down and once you get out of the network, it all disintegrates. So this is the day today, and we're very happy so to announce that. Basically, we were called there to send Corona magnetically by the source to do that job and at the same time rescue a mother and her child, Liz and little young Leonie, from the den of the Satanists, okay, which they were programming both of them. They were programming the mother to give her consent for her child to be sacrificed by them. Right, and they were programming the child, preparing her for the sacrifice. Okay, and probably and this two days uh, ago, fil this filthy fellow is programmed, so he may not even be aware of what he's doing. 
they're so demented they're not aware of anything because they're run by this wetico mm. okay it's altar yeah it, they, they, they have altars which this wetico operates through okay which the archons operate through so on this level he's like what the hell are you talking about right and this is how they this is how they hide satanism this is how the archons hide what they're doing through altars so basically what where was i what i was what was i explaining got lost there no, no, no. um while well, we went to saint corona we yet yeah, rescued liz along with leone so two days ago what happened was finally leone the child she started getting a healing she started purging the programs. She was purging all night. Their programs, their hooks that they have in her through black magic, witchcraft. And now she's healed. So after that, since then, they've been going crazy yeah. because they really hate that's them. where they've the woman control. that's where the woman where we stayed started turning against us and saying to Liz, to the mother of the child. Steve has been manipulating her child when the child herself says, no, that's not true. That's he didn't manipulate me. <laughs> so she got a massive healing. And now well, the key thing about this is they have no access point to us anymore. No access. And point. then, then you are out of the network. And what happens next? Well, it's an interesting journey, but I think we did the most difficult job. Yeah. Already. <laughs> So uh, I saw in your recent live stream that you said you're going back this weekend. Or is that do a yeah. different spot? We do action what we are instructed to do. However, we always stay maverick. I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to do next. <laughs> but this activated the entire network. Like suddenly this guy who we were talking about, we're going in there. He pops up on the, on the chat. What are you talking about? Bro? And the whole network starts uh, calling us. Like another guy uh, also starts calling me. The, the, you see, you can now you can play with them. And we don't know what we're going to do next. The only thing I know is I need a little bit of rest and have a place where I can settle down a little bit. That's why before the show today, I had a nervous breakdown. I've been under attack the whole day. Flu-like symptoms, a.k.a. Zhang Ji. That's the truth. Uh, I've been on the constant attack today because this witchcraft on is the real. Throat, on the throat. It's real. And they just do not want us to know that this is what they're doing the whole time. When you're making a difference, they do witchcraft. And, yeah. and within our circles, uh, we notice certain key people that uh, are cycling these periodic similar symptoms not at all like anything in the past, but then, you know, knowing what to do, get rid of them and then very predictably come on again and so forth. So what do we say, or, or what do you observe in your country with the people that are injecting the venom into their bloodstream that makes them more amenable to this arconic resonance? Is there any hope for them? Yes, there is. However, it's a choice. We talked about this in an interview we gave, um, deleting the real virus. Yes, there's hope because everything is a choice and stays a choice. It's not one thing. Oh, I've given my signature and done this. We are only now starting to find out the real healing of this plant medicine. When you make the choice you want to get out of that state you're in after this therapy, you can in my understanding because everything is possible and reality can change any second and i it's would say truth. you can tap into those realms without the plant medicine too just want to stress yeah, absolutely. that uh, breathing techniques for example that we do with, from wim hof perfect yeah. holotropic Wonderful breathing medicine. too ice cold water slays yeah yes. so ice has anybody water. in your yeah, uh, I would agree with that. Has anybody in your circles or yourselves taken those types of plant medicines and put them through alchemical processes to concentrate uh, more of the spiritual matter so that it can really, um, you know, maybe bypass more and get direct access? You mean with the medicine? Yeah, for instance, uh, you know, in my work, 
Um, yeah. You know, we have ways of separating the parts and concentrating the three different, uh, you know, um, components of everything, you know, which is the, the yeah. body, the spirit and, and, the, and the soul, and then having a way to isolate and then also determine any of those factions to work on a certain part of any dimension. So um, I'm, you know, as I listen to you, I've got all wow. sorts of ideas I'd like to start doing, but it takes a while to create those things. Basically, um, the way we use the medicine is mm -hmm. we use it when we have an aim, a focus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. an intention, if you will. And we focus all our power on our intention. And we keep it there when we're working with the medicine, which which uh, which makes our intention so strong that it has to happen. Mm. That's the way we use which it. Which is an alchemical process that maybe mm. would allow one to go there without having to go through elaborate laboratory. The way yeah. I would explain it okay. is that ayahuasca, I did six times ayahuasca, and I can tell you that I had no idea about it what it really is. These are the real mysteries to find out because this has, it is the conduit where you can change an entire fabric it's, of reality. That's how powerful it is. It's a teacher. The medicine is a teacher. It teaches you how to do it so that you no longer need it to do it. You medicine could be seen as a gift from from this garden planet we're on, Gaia, which we're inherently connected to as a, as a gift to combat the AI, Arconic, extra, whatever you want to call it, that is trying to attack her. So they hate it. Mm -hmm. They hate it. It's a nuclear weapon for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's where they took the nuclear weapon principle and inverted it and used it against us and thus have their own version of nuclear weapon in this system. But this... This is the real nuke for the Archons. It's the intelligence it's a, it's a, of the plant kingdom. Yeah, defense mechanism of the planet against intrusion. Yeah. And uh, Datura, by the way, is the great sister of Ayahuasca. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, the it, ayahuasca. <laughs> and she is relentless, Datura. You know what? We have a saying, and it's true, actually. You don't take Datura, would not recommend anyone to take Datura, by the way. Never. You don't take Datura, Datura takes you. Absolutely. Just I know the other it day, so she well. kicked in, she kicked in just during our day. And it was a Datura ceremony the whole day and the next day. It was unbelievable. So basically, we did the Datura ceremony back in what month was it when we went to Corona? November. November. And two days ago, or three days ago, it kicked in again in our system and we found ourselves in a ceremony in the middle of the day. And the reason why she kicked in was for us to, de because we were under attack and she wanted us to decode the attack to see for what it was so that we could protect ourselves. She was teaching us how to do it by making us face it. Look guys, be alert. There's an attack taking place. Can you see it? Yes, that's what it is. Do you know how to resolve it? I'll guide you through it a little bit. It's an amazing intelligence how it works. Yeah. So and and of course that was the. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Oh no, you go, please. I was just going to say, and of course that was what the original alchemical work was about: is using plants and minerals to um, understand yourself, so that you could go directly and you know uh, through the work resolve your own impediments and then to do exactly what you gentlemen are talking about. Okay. So um, I understand it's all individual choice that we're making these days. Everybody's making the ultimate choice and uh, not everybody is ready to go to the level where you're working at. So how much can be done by people like yourself that will then help dispel the general spell over the population and to make that choice possibly a little bit easier for other less aware folks to make well, uh, magnetics have been activated now so mm, well yeah go on. i would i would like to say that 
everyone is doing the great work who's truly doing the great work by just not being deviated too much okay just have a focus so it all works again with this field phenomena we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing if it weren't for the field that includes everyone we're just doing our part to it which we were guided to do and it's the magnetic pyramid you see the downward pyramid it's the principle of the one also in the matrix and the enemies of life hate that principle they then call it the the savior complex or savior the jesus Messiah. complex and all that because of the fact that it is the most important principle the magnetics which means that because there's a lot of talk when is thing when are things going to shift how many numbers do we need this and that this is all complication the simple fact is it only takes one to shift an entire reality because of the power of the individual the individual connected with the collective it's the torus field and the individual can connect with the collective field and the, the the amount of healing that is possible is infinite because it has to be infinite because we are of an infinite nature. I mean, it's proven. It's what they call the hundred monkey syndrome. The one does it, puts it into the field and everybody else, all the others start picking it up. And before you know it, yeah. it becomes reality. You know, well, there's this idea of the law of one, you know, where we're all inherently one and it just takes one. And if you think about some of the greatest revolutions and change in the world was from one singular consciousness. Yep. Thank God. And the Satanists, you know. the Satanists hate the knowledge of this. Yes. That's why they demonize it. Who do you think you are? You, you must be suffering from savior messiah complex. Or superiority complex. Superiority complex, narcissism. When in actual fact, it is confidence, which is the most important thing to have. Yeah. And this has been subverted by a lot of the Eastern mysticism and the New Age, where they they look down upon us as, like you said, chauvinistic or ego. It's the ego, right? When we understand, oh, this is the divine right of singular consciousness yeah. to defeat yeah. evil. But these Satanists well, can we... tell you whatever they want, okay? And you can't do nothing about it. It has to be their way, you know? But what's uh, we live in wonderful times too, where a lot of this knowledge has been westernized so that we can understand the physics behind it. So we no longer have to use uh, terminologies from other cultures or occult terminologies. You know, people like Steiner, you know, first started, and then people like Walter Russell explained the waveform mechanics of it. And so we were also told forever that this would be a war on the mental plane because our thoughts, which create the polarizations in reality in the first place, uh, we have to be hijacked there. And then, of course, that magnetic principle that you're talking about is that um, cold yin internal principle, the feminine, the divine feminine, that allows the informational fields to uh, compact or compress and outpicture in our reality. So if we are compromised at that level at before the compression, then of course we're using our, our access to magnetic, which the other side no longer has to compress their reality, their informational fields instead of our own. So it's uh, my point is it's all of this is out in the open. It's very, easy to understand even with the analytical part of our brains and there are also technologies available that some of us are already using uh, as well as you know the techniques that you gentlemen are discussing that can uh, really help uh, get that power back so that we start manifesting our reality instead of somebody who's trying to steal our life force upstream we'll say and when we say our reality i want to specify that and this is the basic template what we're talking about to take the planet back mm -hmm. all it is that you enter into natural reality instead of artificial reality that's what we're talking about and it's very interesting what i decoded after our last ceremonies is by taking ayahuasca what you do is you create a bond with the planet, which then supersedes 
the bond that was created for you with your birth certificate in the system so your aim and vision becomes one and the same as the aim and the vision of the creation that you live in which is the same vision of the source that created it which is you and that's the truth the one and only truth i've spoken of there's only one truth everyone talks about um their truth i have my truth no doesn't matter there's only one truth it's the truth of natural order of the one and only source of all creation if you're Which not in would line be an with automatic it, occurrence if unless we interfere exactly. with it well anybody who hasn't had their uh, moral codes tampered with uh by the influence of these archons um, embodies that anyway they don't need to be told what it is they're in line with it or you go through a process like i've been through for example or also errol has been through where suddenly you drop uh, you stop drinking alcohol you stop uh, smoking cigarettes you stop the weed you stop all the distractions meat. you stop the carbohydrates you stop the meat and that all in a few months because you're aligning with moral code and finally it's like the self poison mechanism gets deleted it's like it's an incredible journey and it's pure healing it's the habits you see yeah. they program us with our habitual behavior and that's why they talk about a new normal well this well, is it's an opt-in it's an opt-in slavery system it's so brilliant because it plays on our weakness and obviously yeah. they're they're also engaging with a lot of um you know nefarious schemes from birth to to trick us because they are the master trickers. But yeah, I quit coffee. I quit caffeine uh, six days ago. I don't even know if I told you this, Baron. I feel like a moron or like an idiot right now sometimes. Like I'm, my brain is, I've been used to doing coffee and coconut oil every morning for seven years. So, um, and I've been called, I quit alcohol three years ago. Uh, yeah, and it's it's so true. It's like discipline and dedication and um and really becoming um, one with uh, with our desire to be as morally, um, I don't know, in tune with natural law as we can. And that's how everyone can do the work. We don't have to, people listening, you don't have to go out and, and go to these like ceremonial centers and counter them with, with, yeah. with what they're doing. You do it in your daily lives with every decision and thought you make. And that is the work. It's that easy. Whatever and your that, calling is, whatever your calling is, Everybody's calling is different, whatever your calling is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have to be careful because a lot of information that people get, even through so-called natural health channels, uh, like dietary protocols and, and that sort of thing, are actually leading us down the, the wrong path. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the so-called experts telling you what to eat what not to eat and yeah. it's mm -hmm. we you see when we're in line with ourselves with our true nature and natural order of things we are our own doctors we know what our body needs we know what we need we know what we want we know what sickness is we know what health is so then we don't need anybody to tell us what to eat what not to eat what to do what not to do Simple. Yeah, and it's about so going into the one one thing on that bear. I was just gonna say it's about going into the stillness, which is which is another whole aspect of modernity and distraction. We talk about all the time: the apps, the phones, the the non the nonstop and social media, all that. It's to keep us away from ourselves and our ability to go in the stillness and and go into truth, which is literally this. For those who are listening, it's me just like meditating. <laughs> like that's what it is. That's where truth is. So um, self responsibility. Yeah. Yep. Self responsibility. Let's say. Hmm. So um, exactly on every level. So uh, if we could bring this around full circle um, and just ask you what your prognosis is uh, in your country in Australia. As far as what you see happening on the ground, uh, do you see a significant um, pushback, we'll say, you know, a lot of folks taking to the streets? Um, and I know that's just operating on one level, but it could be a symptom of people waking up. So 
uh, what do you what do you think is in store for us here? Well, a perfect parameter to measure that an awakening is taking place is when the agenda speeds up. Mm -hmm. So what have we got uh, in Austria? What have we got in Austria? Forced therapy. Right. And you know what? It's a total disaster. They had to come out last <laughs> week because we already called it out in our interview with Mark Devlin. We said, nah, it's right. just a bluff. We don't talk about what they're going to do because they're a bluff. We talk about what we're doing, which makes them react. And suddenly an insidious force that works from the background, not wanting anyone to realize, I've just explained how the European Union was created, goes full throttle. And that is the signature of an awakening. So it's a catastrophe. They had to come out last week. Oh, the, it's not going to work in February because they had it planned in February. It's not going to work, but in April. Then a few days later, the and, and as they delete, as they uh, postponed it, the third prime minister, it's never happened in Austria's history, the third prime minister, Nihama, in two months, the third in two months, gets tested positive. <laughs> In other words, taken out of circulation, but he's failed. He's failed. And then in the whole chaos, in, in this theater, because they are clowns, the, the involutionary force, the satanic, they're clowns. Look at them like that. That's an empowerment. Mm -hmm. They're running around and days later, he says, oh, no, we're going full ahead on February. I don't think so, because what's going to happen next? And this I tell with absolute confidence is we take over. And I'm getting visions like V for Vendetta. Why they're pushing the agenda so harder than ever now, okay, is because they know that what's going to happen is that the Satanism is going to be unraveled, okay? That's coming to the surface. All their satanic rituals, what they've been doing with the children, blood sacrifices, it's all coming <coughs> out. So all this, they have to distract people's attention okay with bluffs in the form of oh we're doing they're doing this in austria they they're doing that in austria what are they doing in austria nothing it's all a bluff we're sitting here right now we're free we go wherever we want we we do whatever we want there's nothing like that here unless you consent to it it's as simple as that you know uh, there was an article the other day uh saying that the omic omicron variant of the coronavirus is causing sleep paralysis. All you got to do is invert that. What they actually mean is they can no longer sleep anymore. Okay. Because of us, the awakening, the rising of the consciousness and the awareness of the people, life doesn't sustain them here to be anymore. So they can't eat. They can't sleep anymore. They're not even able to breathe anymore. They're dropping this creation becomes poisonous to them. What is life to us now becomes toxic and poisonous for them. That's all this because in, in this whole story, it's us, the life force that is the virus to them. Okay. Yeah. So what is symbolized as this, putting the virus into your arm, is for turns out for them, they, they have to put it into the body for their AI matrix mainframe to function. However, we're back to terrain theory. What happens with them, and this is what we realize through plant medicine, direct intel from the planet, the way the mechanism of liability kicks in with them is that everything turns to poison for them. And it's beautiful. Not the by, environment by natural order. turns poisons. By natural order. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just in a couple of weeks, uh, you have the worldwide premiere of Terrain 1 and 2 that was produced by uh, Dr. Kaufman, MD, and uh, Marcy Kravitz. He did a wonderful job. And uh, these are the things they absolutely can't stop. So I'd really uh, recommend everybody stay tuned for that one. We'll have all the links up for it. And what you see obviously happening in our country, the bureaucrats and the alleged leaders are unraveling at the seams. They can't even uh, make coherent statements anymore. They're visibly, visibly uh, shaken. They're just 
you know, resorting to uh, outlandish things and becoming a parody of themselves. And, and I think the, the best way to disarm them is to make fun of them. And in the US, uh, of course, we're censored greatly because everybody's just laughing at their antics. They're so exposed. And then on top of it, when things come to uh, the alleged justice system, like the Maxwell, uh, you know, and Epstein cases and just, you know, having to withhold the, the details and then people mysteriously disappearing and people getting suicided. It's, it's so obvious to so many people now that, um, you know, what you're describing, yeah, it, it's absolutely happening. So we just have yeah. to hang in there and, uh, we, you know, hold that space for everybody else. We call it the self-slaying mechanism, which is built into the mm -hmm. fabric of their system. They slay each other than they slay themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. It's due to the activation of the magnetics. That's, that's, what, that's what we're looking at. So it, it's not that they're coming after us. We're coming after them. So they are running. We're not running anymore. They are running. Uh, Returning the light on and they're scuttling to the corner. With the roaches they are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, beautiful guys. Thanks so much, man. This has been a great broadcast. Uh, any final parting words for our community? Well, as we talked about the template to take back the planet, to wrap this up in this sense, your intention creates reality. That's why when we talk about Gnosticism, the Gnostics call themselves the Telestai because they were aimed. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the only thing we need to focus on is where are we being deviated with our attention. And when we have that aim and we say enough is enough, I don't want to be entertained anymore because that's what the circus of a lot of the alternative media has become. That's why I like to give healthy critiques. Okay, That's just what I can observe. Instead of tuning into that circus and being fed that AI uh, dystopian version of reality. No. Choose an aim and walk the path of the warrior. That's what we came here to do. We are powerful. The only thing we fear is our power, ultimately. Yeah, I, I would have liked to talk about something else as well, but we, we don't have time now. So um, maybe perhaps another time. But I think this is an important subject as well. We spoke a bit about the network, the satanic network. But we didn't really have time to explain properly in detail how they actually operate yes. and the layers of the network because there's different layers of the network and how the layers function and operate so um well could you um yeah would it be possible i mean we're here and uh if if it's possible to summarize that and i know you don't want to um do it any injustice but you know we'd okay. love to hear anything you have to offer I'll give you an example. Um, we talk about the network, there's layers of it. Um, like this guy, Patrick, who was um, online earlier, uh, who was part of the network, Liz's handler, okay? He's coming online making comments. What are you talking about? You're talking rubbish. Why are you doing this? My family this month. This is the conscious human level or the conscious level of that individual, Okay. However, the, um, the network level operates in his altar because the altar was created in this individual, probably in his childhood through some kind of traumatic uh, abuse scenario. He was programmed. His altar was programmed, set up for possession by the Archons so that he can be used as a tool by the Archons without him realizing that he's being used okay and the way this guy is, is when he's under the influence of the altar okay he's under the influence of the altar and he's doing what he's doing obviously it's the archon and when the archon leaves and he comes back to his original state altar the way he has to cope with reality is through drowning himself in alcohol he's an alcoholic uh chronic cannabis smoking okay just to keep himself He's not aware most of the time, basically, just to keep himself numb from facing the reality. Right? So what these archons do in these individuals is they place them into certain key points strategically 
they play them like a uh, like, like a game of chess, basically. They're not conscious. However, there are conscious players in the network who know exactly what they're doing all the time. And these are initiates. They know exactly what they're doing. So there's different la layers. So when people think... Um, so when we say... Um, almost everyone is incorporated into the network without realizing, okay? We were talking about moral codes. The moment you weaken your moral codes, okay? You're harvested. You're initiated into evil. Once you're initiated into evil, evil has access to you, can use you. Okay? And these people aren't conscious players of the network. It, it's um, it it's goes, a little bit difficult to explain. It goes very deep and a lot of... When we say the one problem we have on the planet is Satanism, mm. as we, and in the beginning, it's in the families. The abuse in the families and not talking about it not having an outlet to speak about it and to heal. And this is where our work is also leading toward is healing those family units from the small unit, okay? From that microcosm, like we are right now, we've had many people go back and forth and got to know lots of people in the last one and a half years. Only that. me, Errol, Liz, and her daughter have stayed. And from that small mm -hmm. unit, you keep that clean. There's no access point. No infiltration. No infiltration. And you upgrade further uh, down the path of the intention you set, which is taking back the planet. And our only protection from infiltration among us was more our moral codes, the strength of our moral codes. Moral code is everything. Yeah. Which is why they're trying to debauch our morals on every level. Exactly. We live in an immoral society for a reason. And that's why we're losing our rights, because we do not know the difference between right and wrong behavior. It's as simple as that. That's the esoteric, mm -hmm. energetic connection. Why, through this scam, we've lost our rights. We can't lose our freedom, okay? But the rights in the system we lost because of the overwhelming majority not knowing the difference between right and wrong. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So it sounded, and I know it's a big topic, so sorry, but um, it sounded like earlier on you were suggesting that maybe even the seats of power like the Vatican that are normally implemented with everything, there's actually uh, control grids behind them, and um, maybe they're not calling the shots after all. No, no. It's, the, it's always the archons that are calling the shots. Yeah. That's where the control comes from, from beyond the veil. And we've had access to that only because we went from the foreground to the background. And then you're dealing with farmers. You're dealing with unsuspecting people. Like a Satanist said in a magazine, 20, 2008, I think. Satanists are peculiar people. And that is the real structure. That's why you, you also have that in movies. Like... Um, uh, hot fuzz, wasn't it? Hot fuzz, yeah. Hot fuzz. You go portraying the network, showing the network, and Fight Club. The the first rule of Fight, Fight Club, Club: do not talk about Fight Club. Do not talk about the network. Yeah. And they've hidden. And do you think? Mm -hmm. Right. And do you think any of these uh, arconic entities have succeeded in physically incarnating, um, you know, and manipulating power from the physical side in that way? Well. Yeah, they have set up their vessels. They look like human, but they're not. Yeah. They're walking among, mm -hmm. uh, among us. Um, the infiltration is deeper than one can imagine. They're everywhere. They're all around us. Mm -hmm. they're it's all like, around they, it's us. like they live. It portrays it to a P. The movie it's they exactly live. exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. They're walking mm -hmm. among us. Mm -hmm. They do not belong mm -hmm. to this planet. Or in the movie Avatar. They show it all in the movies when you decode them the right way. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's an interesting, um, in, on Odyssey here, one of our um, fans has an interesting story about how he did uh, Salvia, I think it's, I'm assuming it's a, uh, yeah, and had um, a very similar experience where he was seeing, because he was coming from like a gangster kind of uh, gangster rap 
seen and was seeing certain people that looked vile and had the same exact same story. And he actually even talks about a dragon and having the power of slashing them. But after, and there's a whole long story here. It's a really incredible story here and it's changed his life and he was gang stalked and all this stuff after and all these attachments of these arconic forces after them. But he's talking about how now he has the ability he doesn't have to use salvia ever again and has the ability now to see that through the people around him by their auras because and, and if they're attached salvia or not. medicine the salvia medicine taught him how to do it so now he can do it it's yes. the same with us yeah. Yeah, as long as they are physically near me i can sense if their aura is pushing or carrying evil sometimes they can make me sick or ill sometimes repulse them to the point of never wanting to be near me again wow yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's just real, guys. So don't play around. Just like I say, don't play around with the Ouija board unless you know what the hell you're doing. Because all these all these realms are real. And um, yeah, so well, well, we'll have to have you back. We had Kathy O'Brien on uh, a couple of months a couple of months back. She's uh, you know, a living testament to escaping the deep dark realms of the satanic uh, uh, you know, control system and what they do. Uh, and you're right, it's all comes into the family. So to be able to, you don't, you don't even know what your neighbors are doing. Like it's important. That's why yeah. I always say it's important to go from, from the small, your small neighborhood, your community up. And like, really, that's how also another great strategy is like get really unified in your neighborhood and with your locality and build your tribe around you. And you know, then like who's around you, because for all, you know, it's like the, um, what was that creepy movie? Uh, uh, uh what's it called? Um, Lord of the, not Lord of the Rings, uh, uh, where she's the FBI agent and they find a house where he's the guy. Uh, uh, well, I'm having the biggest brain fart ever. They must not want me to. Uh, <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Like that's oh, where, that creepy yeah. guy is living in a house next to you in your neighborhood and you don't even know that he's there. Sorry, guys. I quit coffee five, six days ago. So my brain is like. <laughs> it's all around so. us. It's all around, it's all us, around us. All around us. So, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Um, what a what a talk. What a powerful discussion. I hope everybody got a lot out of this. Uh, where's the best way? People are wondering how they can follow up with you and get in contact with you guys. Um, the YouTube channel is The Gnostic Takeover. Can't be censored. So just go there and have fun. <laughs> we like and swearing, then, by the way, because some in, in a lot of our videos, we don't. That's what we explain to the audience also. We do not talk to the audience. We talk to the demons because the only language they understand is the language of the command and speaking loudly. Authority. Authority. Power. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah. And when uh, Mike and I are in private conversations, um, <laughs> let's just say it's a little more uncensored ourselves. You know, we kind of play it here just to use different mediums. But Stephen and Earl, thank you so much for being with us. And um and 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 please know that you're not alone in this. And uh, you know our tribe is gathering here, and uh, you know our light combines with yours, and even people that we don't know that are operating on that same field of resonance, uh, it's making that uh, combined uh, effect. And we're, as I always like to think of it, but really truly believe, is that we are very close to critical mass and just all of us getting out there into the public eye a little bit more, sharing your message is uh, going to expedite that. And that's why we all do what we're doing. So thank you. Thank to well, all of you. Thank you, for, thank you guys for having thank us you guys. the message out. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you everybody for that was in the chat. It was quite lively. A lot of people on the live stream. Uh, we love you. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, please uh, go out and share this. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, go sub subscribe to their YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the show notes, show notes below when you guys should have uh, like 100,000 subscribers. So um, we'll, <laughs> we'll push that out. And uh, yeah, love you all. Have a beautiful day. Remember to get outside, get your feet in the soil, go plant something, go compost. Like someone was saying in the chat, go compost and create those more, those beautiful little microorganisms, help them grow. We need them back their life. And um, yeah. And we'll see you next week with David Weiss as we go deep into the greatest uh, <laughs> di divergent uh, uh, seemed like thing that's really breaking the community apart, which is flat earth. Love you guys. See you next week. Bye-bye. Much Thank love. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Take care.